Hey guys, in this video we're going to look at a few different examples, both of uh, regular polygons and then of a composite figure. So we've got four shapes in there that we have to figure out the, um, the, the area of. So we want to find the area. And again, I uh, just want to write down the equation. Area equals one half AP. So A is the apothem and P is the perimeter of the, the regular polygon. So one half. The apothem here looks like it's 5. The perimeter is going to be 6 times 5, which is 30. Okay, Half of 30 is 15. 15 times 5 is 75 units squared. Okay. All right, moving on to this example, we want to find the area here. We have a, a regular, uh, again, we'll assume uh, this has been given as, as a regular uh, uh, looks like hexagon. Okay, this has a little bit. Uh, actually, you might think, oh, we don't have enough information here. All we're given actually is a radius. Okay, so all we're given is a radius. So, how in the world, when the equation is one half AP, we don't know this? Uh, so, how can we find the perimeter? We don't know the apothem. So, how can we find this? All right. Well, first of all, <clears throat> I would encourage you to draw in this triangle. Okay. And then I want you to think about how many triangles there are total in this uh, regular hexagon. Okay, it looks like there's going to be six, right? So if this whole, um, if this is all 360 degrees, okay, and we know that, that all these sides, all the radii are equal, and all, uh, you know, the the sides of the polygon are equal, then all of these triangles are going to be congruent. Okay, So if those triangles are congruent, that means these angles must all be congruent as well. So there are six congruent angles. But we know that this is 360 degrees total. So 360 degrees total divided by six congruent angles is going to be 60 degrees per angle. Okay, So this is going to be 60 degrees, and all of these will be 60 degrees as well. So if that's 60, uh, that helps us a little bit, I guess. But then um, we still don't know the, the apothem. We still don't know the, the base or, or the perimeter. But if that's 60, we know that the radii are congruent. If the radii are congruent, we know that these two angles are congruent. And we know that these three angles must add up to 180. So x plus 60 plus x. Let me write this down. x plus 60 plus x equals 180. So 2x equals 120, so x equals 60. All right. In other words, we have 60, 60, 60. That means that this, uh, sorry, this is isosceles. That means this is um, an equilateral triangle. Okay, this triangle is equilateral, so it's equilateral, which means that this is going to be 3 and this is going to be 3. So we've got our perimeter now, or we know how to find our perimeter, but we still don't have our height. So how are we going to find our height? Okay, let's go over here. I want to take this triangle, 3, 3, 3. So we have 3, 3, 3. And we need to find the height of that triangle. Okay. In other words, we need to find uh, this distance. Okay. So we have 1.5 here and, and 3 here. So we need to use the Pythagorean theorem. We need to use Pythagorean theorem. So in other words, uh, 1.5, I'm going to write that. So this is 1.5. I'm going to write 1.5 as 3 over 2. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work right here. We know that 3 halves squared, 3 halves squared, plus we'll call this A or the apothem. The apothem squared equals uh, 3 squared, which is 9. Okay. So this is 9 fourths plus a squared equals 9. Okay, converting this into fourths, we get 9 fourths plus a squared equals, uh, this is 36 fourths. Okay, so a squared equals 25 fourths. I'm sorry, uh, subtract 9, you get 27 fourths. And so a is going to equal root. 27 over 4. Okay, I'm, I'm going to reduce that a little bit. Let me let me come in here and reduce this. Okay, so a we know that 
root 27 we can write as 9 times 3, so 3 root 3 over 2. Okay. Uh, if you didn't want to go through this big, long, complicated process, you probably knew this was a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and you could have gotten this a little bit quicker knowing uh, special right triangle identities. Um, but anyway, this is going to be our apothem. So area equals 1 half. Apothem is 3 root 3 over 2. 1 half A times P. The perimeter is going to be 6 times 3, which is 18. 6 times 3 is 18. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, area equals half. So this is going to be, um, I'm going to reduce this here. Half, this is going to be 1, and this will be 9. Okay, so we get 9 times 3 is 27 root 3 over 2 units squared. So even though it looks like at the beginning you can't uh, find that with with a with a hexagon uh, with a hexagon because of the properties of, of these central angles with a hexagon then it is possible because of it creates some special uh, equilateral triangles and so you can figure that out. Okay, let's move on to the the octagon. Um, so again, uh, area equals one half AP. So area equals 1 half. The apothem this time is given. It's 5. The perimeter is going to be 4 times 8, which is 32. So half of 32 is 16. 16 times 5 is 80 units squared. Okay. Finally, uh, we have this composite figure. So in this composite figure, uh, what we're going to have to do is figure out uh, basically the, the area of each of the shapes. So one, two, three, and four. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and start that out. I'm going to find the area of one first. So the area of one equals, well, that looks like a circle or a semicircle. So it should be one half pi r squared. Okay, one half pi r squared. The question is, what is r? Well, if this is 4, we know that r is going to be 2. So that equals 1 half times uh, pi times 4, because 2 squared is 4. So this distance is 2, okay, 2. So this equals 2 pi. All right. The area of number 2, shape 2. Uh, is going to be, it's just a rectangle, so length times width. That would be length times width, which equals 8 times 4, which equals 32. Okay. The area of the third shape here, it looks like a quarter circle. Quarter circle. Okay. So quarter circle. All right. So the whole circle would be here maybe. All right. So uh, the area of a quarter circle is one-fourth, one-fourth pi r squared, okay, which equals one-fourth pi. The radius here this time is going to equal four. Okay, so don't use the same radius as here. Uh, we have to use the, the, the appropriate radius here is going to be four, so four squared. So 4 squared is 16. A quarter of 16 is 4, so this is going to equal 4 pi. All right. Finally, we have this, this triangle. All right. And the triangle, we, we see, uh, we need to figure out, well, the, the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. Okay, so we need to figure out, it looks like we don't have the base or the height. So we need to figure that out. Um, what we do know is this is 8 and this is 2, so this distance must be uh, 6 here. So the height, it looks like, is going to be 6. Okay. And here we, uh, we don't know. So uh, we have a right triangle. We have uh, two, two of the sides given, so we can use Pythagorean theorem. So 6 squared plus question mark squared equals 10 squared. All right. 36 plus question squared equals 100. So 
question squared equals 64 and question equals 8. Okay, so question is going to equal 8. All right, so it looks like this is going to equal 8. So now we have our, our necessary uh, pieces here. So uh, this is going to be 1 half base times height equals 1 half. The base is 8. The height is 6. All right, so uh, half of 8 is 4. 4 times 6 is 24. So now we have to add all of these together to get the composite uh, area. So 2 pi, 2 pi plus 32 plus 32 plus 4 pi plus 24, 24. All right. Looks like we have, uh, I'll add the numbers first. So 32 and 24 is 56 plus 6 pi units, units square. Now, again, you can, you can use your calculator and figure out what 6 pi is. It should be somewhere around 20, okay? Um, but, but anyway, I think this, for me, is an acceptable answer. Maybe your teacher wants what, one number. Maybe if you check your answers in the back of your book, then it would want one number as well. But for me, this is an acceptable answer. And so uh, throughout you know, this, this process, hopefully you learned a little bit about finding areas of regular polygons and composite figures. Thanks for watching.